Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with grilled mojo beef. That's right, I really do want to call it grilled mojo beef, but apparently we're not allowed to. It is mojo, so that's how I will be pronouncing it, but only for this video. In real life, I'm going to continue to say mojo, because it really does sound so much cooler. But anyway, no matter how you say it, this Cuban-inspired marinade is easy to make, relatively fast, and devastatingly delicious. In particular, when we're going to use it with skirt steak. Possibly my favorite cut of beef for the grill. So let's go ahead and get started with the aforementioned meat. And they call it skirt steak because of the shape. Although if we're going by that, they really should call it sash steak or scarf steak, which it looks much more like. So I don't know, maybe they came up with this cut of steak in the 60s. And prepping this stuff is extremely easy. All we need to do is cut this into three or four smaller pieces, so it's easier to work within the marinade and on the grill. And no, we're not going to trim any of that surface fat off. That is not silver skin. We can eat that. Not only is that going to help keep all this moist, it also tastes really good. But anyway, we're going to cut that skirt steak up into some smaller, easier to handle pieces. And then once our meat is set, we can move on to the mojo marinade, which we will start with a whole bunch of freshly crushed garlic, also known as very, very finely minced garlic. And then to the garlic, let's go ahead and add a nice big splash of olive oil, as well as a generous amount of kosher salt, as well as its good friend freshly ground black pepper. And then speaking of pepper, I'd also like to add a little bit of my personal favorite. It goes by the name cayenne. We will also go ahead and add some ground cumin, or cumin as some people pronounce it. That depends on where you're from. We will also toss in a little bit of dried oregano. And then last but not least, we need to finish this off with our freshly squeezed citrus juice. And what we really want to use here are sour oranges. Except I'm not exactly sure what those are or where you buy them. So what we're going to do is use some regular orange, plus some fresh lime juice to sort of simulate that flavor. And of course, by all means, if you have access to sour oranges, use them. But I've never seen them in a grocery store. And believe me, I've been in a lot of grocery stores. But anyway, like I said, we're going to go with orange and lime instead. And then once all that's in there, we'll grab a whisk and give it a thorough mixing. At which point we can add in our pieces of skirt steak. And even though we're going to transfer this into a zip top bag to marinate it, I still like to introduce the pieces of meat one at a time to make sure they're coated. I mean, it's probably redundant, but it makes me feel better. So I'm going to add those one at a time. And then once our meat's in there, I'm also going to add half an onion that I finely sliced. And then we'll take our tongs and mix those in. And would this have been easier if I'd used a bigger bowl? Yes, significantly. But I didn't, and it was still fine. It just took an extra minute or two. And once those are mixed in, we'll go ahead and transfer everything into a plastic bag. Of course, adding every drop of marinade we can. And then once all that's in the bag, we'll squeeze out as much air as we can and seal that up nice and tightly. And then I like to transfer that into some kind of dish, just in case our bag sustains some kind of catastrophic structural damage, also known as a tear. We don't want that marinade all over our fridge. And then what we'll do is we'll transfer that into the refrigerator for two to three hours to marinate. Okay, one and a half might be enough and four could still be okay. But for me, the sweet spot is between two and three hours, after which we are pretty much ready to grill. So what I like to do at this point is take my tongs and pull that meat out of the marinade and lay it down on a paper towel lined sheet pan. We don't mind a little bit of marinade attached to the meat, but we don't want it sopping wet. So what I like to do is transfer it down to a sheet pan like this and let it drain for a couple minutes. And as you can see, I'm also pulling the onions out of here and placing that on top of the meat. And the reason it looks like I was dividing those onions up onto each piece of meat was I was actually going to grill it like that. But as you'll see, on the way to the grill, I changed my mind. So let that be a lesson to you. Don't be afraid to change your mind, especially if you have a bad idea. But anyway, once we've pulled our meat out of the marinade and have let it drain for a minute or two, we will head out to the grill, where I'm going to cook this over a hot charcoal fire, mesquite to be exact. And because I still don't have a proper grill yet, I will be once again using the post-apocalyptic brick grill which works, it's just too small. So I have to do mine in a couple batches, but I'm not complaining. I mean, I literally got paid to stand in the sun and grill meat. But anyway, I'm gonna place those steaks down over very hot coals, and we're gonna cook that for about three or four minutes per side or until medium rare-ish. And as I mentioned, I'd planned on grilling these with the onions attached, but I had second thoughts because I was afraid that moisture was gonna prevent a really nice dark brown sear. So even though you can see a few pieces here and there, I did scrape off most of the onions. And I ended up just grilling those while my meat rested. But anyway, I grilled that first side for about three and a half minutes. And we'll flip those over. And you know we normally go for our beautiful diamond pattern grill marks. But since we're going to slice this up, it doesn't matter. And if you're going by thermometer, you want to pull these off at about 125 internal temp. 
But because of the shape, it's kind of hard to get a thermometer in there accurately. So I generally just go by look and feel. And one tip you may have heard me give before with this stuff, when you see the moisture starting to form on the surface, or it almost gets like a shiny, glossy look to it. That means it's probably just about right. And even though it's kind of hard to see from this angle, that's what was happening to mine. Those juices were starting to come to the surface. So I went ahead and pulled those off. And as usual, once those are grilled, we're going to let them rest for at least five minutes. And I know that's not easy. You want to eat it right now. Completely understandable. I mean, look at that meat. But we really do need to wait a couple minutes before we slice. So I'll tell you what, let's compromise. If you have some bread around, we'll let you dip it in that juice to give you a little sneak preview, but that's it. So anyway, we will let those rest for maybe the longest five minutes of your life, at which point we can finally go ahead and slice this up. But we have to do this the right way. Okay, because these pieces of skirt steak have kind of a rectangular shape, people naturally want to cut it across this direction. Okay, that makes sense geometrically, but that's the direction the grain is going. We have to turn it this direction and cut across the grain. Or you cut it the other way, you're still going to get something that tastes good, but it really will feel significantly tougher. So let me cut a few pieces here so you can take a look. And if everything's gone according to plan, you should be looking at some of the juiciest, most beautiful grilled beef you've ever seen. I mean, come on, check that out. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to stop and take a taste here. And even though I sampled a piece from the edge, which should be sort of overcooked and dry, it wasn't even close to that. It was tender, juicy, and incredibly flavorful, which I will give 50% of the credit to the marinade and 50% of the credit to the cut of beef. So this is a team effort here. But anyway, I stopped snacking and cut up the rest of the beef, which I will present sliced up on a big platter with lots of fresh lime. And if we did grill those onions from the marinade, we can also scatter those over the top. And then next up, what we'll do is take any of those accumulated juices from the plate and spoon that over our sliced meat. And I say spoon, even though you see me using a brush. I was only doing this because I wanted every piece to look perfect for the picture. So I took way too long brushing and dabbing that over the top. And then next up, we'll drizzle over a little bit of Spanish olive oil. And then for our final touches, we'll do a little sprinkling of coarse salt. That's going to provide extra seasoning, of course. But also because we're using those large crystals, it's going to provide a textural and visual element as well. And then last but not least, we will finish up with a whole bunch of freshly chopped cilantro. And that's it. My take on grilled moho beef is ready to enjoy. Which, by the way, can be done in so many different ways. I eventually ended up eating this on some rice. But this stuff will also make for an incredible quesadilla, or some world-class tacos or nachos, or if you're into the low-carb thing, these work really well for lettuce cups. So, of course, how you enjoy this is going to be up to you. You are, after all, the major domo of what I prefer to call mojo. And you really do have a lot of options. And we've already discussed that beautiful, juicy, tender texture. But the bright flavor that garlic and citrus marinade provides really pairs wonderfully with so many different things. Like margaritas and cold beer, for example. So anyway, that's it. Grilled moho beef. I'm reminded of the words of the great Tony Montagna, who once said, in this country, first you get the marinade. Then you grill the beef. Then you get the woman. And I'm just paraphrasing, but it was something like that. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. <laughs>